This to me is a lot like climbing a mountain. You look at the mountain and it looks impossible. All you can do is take the steps right in front of you and then you just keep going and eventually you turn around and look behind you and you can see how far you've come. Welcome to the Frugal Fit Mom podcast. This is Christine, your host, and I have kind of a cool scenario to talk about today. And I brought an expert witness with me. It's my buddy, Dave. Dave, my husband. How are you? What's up, everybody? So the reason I brought you on today is because we are going to be helping a family with their budget today. This is an actual family. This is a real family. However, they're anonymous, so there will be no names, although I have all of the details that you might need to help the family. And I thought this could be really fun for us because you and I have gone through a similar debt-free journey, limited income, kids at home, it feels overwhelming, you don't know where to start. So I thought it would be cool to give them kind of our tips or what we would have done in the same situation in order to knock out this issue that they have. If we were working with their scenario, their numbers, their budget. Correct, gotcha. exactly. Okay, so quick synopsis. This is a family of seven. They are married. There's five kids. Oldest is 12. Youngest is three. Okay. Their income is fabulous. Their income is $9,300 a month. Whoa. Yeah, it's so good. The problem is that they're spending $9,385. <gasps> <laughs> so there's a little bit of an issue and there's definitely some debt. So they were doing fine until two years ago. In the last two years, They've had some family issues and just racked up a staggering amount of debt. Is it medical? Do we know anything? It's all kinds of stuff. So let's do just a quick overview. Do not let your jaw drop when you hear this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay so of course there's a car loan. Okay. Um, they have a minivan, which is paid off. An Odyssey, my favorite minivan, just for the record. Okay, that's solid. Solid. And then their regular car died, so they went out and got a 2015 Accord for like $23,000. Okay. Which feels a little high for a 2015 Accord. Did they just buy that recently? Yes, recently. Okay. Okay, so they have a payment on the one car. Okay. Okay. They do also have a personal loan to a family member, which I hate that. Those are the worst. It's not that much. It's a couple thousand. They do have a home improvement loan that they did. They put in a pool. Sweet, right? Yeah. Um, that's $26,000. So like a home equity line of credit or right. whatever. Okay. Here's the kicker. Are you ready for this? 18 credit cards. 18 different credit cards. I didn't gasp. No, but, but I you, wanted to. you sure wanted to. <laughs> Um, just the number of credit cards gives me heart palpitations. Yeah. Like it's such a huge list that it would make me panic just to see how many there are. Now, some of them are not that high as far as the total balance. Uh, there's probably, there's six of the credit cards are at $500 or less total balance. Okay. But there's just so many. So the total debt payments monthly are $3,800. That's the minimum payments on all these debts. That's not their mortgage, by the way. Yeah. That's just debt, not including mortgage. $3,800 a month. That's the minimum payment. That's the minimum payment. And they're payment. paying interest on that. Uh-huh. Oh, gosh. I know. It's, it's kind of messy. I thought we'd go over their regular budget. Let's pick off some low-hanging fruit that they could make. They could make these changes this week and stop overspending. Remember... They're already spending like $100 a month more than they make with the current budget and minimum debt payments. Okay. Okay. So they're not making any progress right now because these minimum debt payments are like $38, $40, $100, you know, on debts that are like 10 grand. They're, they're not getting anywhere. So our goal is to knock down their regular budget and help them make some progress. Let's go over the budget and see if we can help this family. Family of seven. What's the first thing you do? Well, we need to look at what they're actually spending. That's oh. that's the first thing I'm doing. I, their income is so good. I don't know that they need to work more in this case. Let's kick it off by saying they have zero dollars in savings. Okay. So that concerns me quite a bit. If there's an emergency, we're just adding more credit card bills and I don't want to do that. Yeah. Okay. So regular bills. Okay. Their mortgage is sixteen twenty five. dollars Really good. No problem. Netflix. $23. Internet, $83. So far, I don't see any problems. Right. Cell phone bill, $310. Yeah, red flag. Ouch. Let's put that on the list. 
Uh, electric bill average 225. Feels a little high to me, but we live in a cold climate, so we don't run the AC a lot. Water bill, 160. Okay. Alarm, $66. Life insurance, $80 a month. Car insurance, $180 a month. Other than the cell phone bill, I don't see anything in here that's freaking me out. Probably true. Okay. But that's a lot of little things that add up. Well, these are necessary bills. Like, you can't just not pay your water bill. It, the no. water bill is what it is. I know. So, I mean, they could nickel and dime this a little bit, but the savings would be minimal. They could cancel the streaming services and save $20 a month. Yeah. But $20 a month... It's not going to get us enough. not going to get us enough. So, for now, I'm just going to leave that. Let's move to variable expenses. This is where you can really make a difference. Auto gas, car gas, 300 a month. Feels a little high, but gas prices are high right now, so it's kind of, it is what it yeah. is. Groceries is 600, which is low for a family of 7. I think that's quite low. Okay. Eating out is 600. <laughs> I would definitely think you could make some progress there. For sure, for sure. Even um, if you traded $100 more in your grocery budget to get rid of 600 or 500 dollars even out of the eating out budget yeah i think you could definitely do some little switcheroos there and this they, family's really good at eating from scratch they eat a lot of beans and rice already they like it so they're really good at keeping the grocery budget low it's the let's run a mcdonald's for seven people let's hit up a pizza for seven people that really adds up and when some of the changes i'm talking about where we don't eat out so often i'm not talking about forever i'm talking about until we get things under control right right so like personal allowance is about $100 a month total between like the husband and wife. That's not too bad. That's really small. Entertainment's 50 bucks a month. That's fine. You know, that's really low. College savings for five kids, zero. Ooh. Retirement, zero. Oh. Yeah. Oh, those are really concerning. That's very concerning. Um, HOA, 60 a month. You can't really do anything about that if that's where you live. Pool service, $90 a month. Peloton subscription, $46 a month. Apple storage, $3 a month. Okay? Okay. Okay. So we can definitely throw some things on our low-hanging fruit list from that. Yeah. Okay, let's move to, we're going to call it sinking funds. These are things that come up maybe annually or semi-annually that aren't every month. Birthdays, uh, maybe Christmas, travel, things like that. Clothing, $50 a month. That's really low. Haircuts, $20 bucks a month. That's really low. Really low. Super great. Pets, $60 a month. That doesn't seem out of line. No. Birthdays and gifts is $250 a month. That does not include Christmas. That's birthdays. Okay. Birthday gifts. So That's a little high, especially when you're in the state that you're in when you're overspending. Exactly. Exactly. If your finances are in order, you spend whatever you want. Right. I, I don't care. But they are stating they spend $500 a kid at their birthday. And remember, the oldest is 12 and the youngest is three. There's some young kids in there. Well, they have a birthday on average every other month. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. But just think about that. Do we spend even close to $500 a kid on a birthday? No. Not even a little. Maybe we're weird. Maybe we are the weird ones. Are we the weird ones? It just seems extremely... Like a lot of stuff in your house? Yeah, stuff... Uh, I don't I can't even put words to it. It feels... Oh, here's what I know about kids is they don't actually need all that stuff. And <laughs> most people in general are bad at knowing what they want and what they need, and kids are even worse. Yeah. They think they want all the Dollar Tree toys. They don't. They don't. They think they want this other thing. They don't. They beg for the Tickle Me Elmo. Do you remember that? <laughs> the Tickle Me Elmo for $40. They play with it for a week, and then they're done. All that stimulation is, in my opinion, a lot. I just think kids need less than you think. I would say if we go to the word need, mm -hmm. these are not needs. It's a little right. unnecessary. Okay. And it's like we said, it's it's not forever, but when you are overspending, you got to get yourself back under control. Right. And this feels a little out of control for the state they're in. Uh, yeah. Let's add Christmas onto that. They do about $2,000 spend at Christmas, which to me does not feel unreasonable if you consider all the pieces that Christmas has for a family of seven. Yeah. However, like you said, when you're in this kind of scenario, when it's kind of a crisis, it's time to rein that back in. That comes to 170 a month. And then travel, 
$420 a month. Okay. That's probably only enough for that family that's to travel one, once that's a year. Once a year. Yeah. But in their state, they can do like a camping trip. It's, it's too much of a crisis to be taking that monthly budget right now. Yeah. And putting it towards travel. They can't travel for a year. Let's, let's put the vacations on hold for one year so they can put, get things under control a bit. If you did that, it's $4,000. We're talking $4,000. In one year, that's five. That can make a dent. Yes, it will make a dent. There is the budget. What's our total debt? Total. The total number not including the house is $90,000, $90,463. The monthly fees or monthly minimum payments are $3,800 a month. Okay. Okay. So let's tackle the low-hanging fruit. Alarm. And pool service, I say eliminate. Yeah, you can totally do your own pool stuff. Right. I lived in Arizona for 10 years, had our own pool. We did our own pool stuff all the time. For how much dollars are you talking? I don't have a figure, a current figure on my head. Okay. But they're paying close to 100 a month for the service. You could probably do that for 15. Your pool chemicals don't cost that much money. And as long as you keep everything, you know, if you've got a creepy crawler or whatever you got to mm-hmm. keep your pool maintained, I think it's... 25 to 30 dollars probably at the most if you're doing it yourself now to be honest i i am kind of a big fan of an alarm system there's a 66 a month i don't think that's break the budget numbers right here so if they're uncomfortable with getting rid of the alarm i would probably be okay to keep it but is an easy cut yeah like for a couple months or whatever it is now for those that know me know i adore my peloton i adore the peloton the peloton's monthly subscription is 46 dollars a month that's an easy cut because it's easy to pause and turn it back on. Mm-hmm. That one, if they fought me on that, I would say leave it. If that's what's keeping you sane, mm-hmm. right? I totally agree. You got to have something that helps you get through. There's going to be some tightening of the bootstraps here. Yes. And if that's what helps you get through it, then I'm okay with keeping it. Okay. Like, yeah. Like if you're cutting all eating out and you're cutting gifts and you're cutting like a personal allowance and you're cutting entertainment and you keep the Peloton for your own sanity and you use it. Man, and the research behind what cardiovascular activity does for your brain power. It's amazing. Is amazing. So if that's what that is for you, mm-hmm. great. If you've got a bike and you can ride outside instead for a couple months, mm-hmm. then I that's you, great. you cut it for a couple months. Right. Yeah. It's easy to pause and turn it back on. It's easy. So that one depends. That one depends. Cell phone. Let's talk about the cell phone because the cell phone is $310 a month, which made me do this. <gasps> And maybe I don't understand cell phones these days. What is it? I know with Mint Mobile, you can get a really solid plan for $15 a month. Even if every single person of their family of seven had a $15 a month cell phone plan, which by the way is really unrealistic with a three-year-old and a five-year-old and a seven-year-old, okay? You'd cut it to $105 a month, which is still on the high side because not everyone's going to have that cell phone. There are options out here. Now, they might be under contract. Now, this is the hard part. Right. They might be under contract, which would be challenging. I'm assuming they're not. And I'm assuming they do all seven people in the family with a Mint Mobile plan. That saves them $205 a month right there. That is no small chunk of change. No, it is not. I mean, you do that and you keep your Peloton. Yeah. (laughs) Eating out, I say that is gone. Dunzo, zero, zip, nilch. Is that even a word? That's 600 a month. Even if you took 200 of that and moved it over to grocery, so now you're $800 a month grocery and zero eating out, you save $400 a month. Yeah. That is huge. Really huge. Like I said, you've got to get disciplined here. Mm-hmm. And it takes discipline to not eat out. Yeah, it is hard. You've got to plan around it, right? You've got, if you've got a whole activity, like weekend worth of activities out, you've got to pre-make some sandwiches, but you do what it takes to save yourself that kind of money because that's a lot of money. It is. It totally is. Let's go to the birthday line item. (laughs) This is going to sound really harsh. If you're used to doing $500 a kid, yeah, you're going to cut it to 50 a kid, which is less than 50 a month, by the way. Some of my kids' favorite birthdays and Christmases, their gift was like a pack of Play-Doh and a ball and some like dress up princess plastic shoes for 10 bucks. Yeah. People aren't going to understand, but when you really don't have the money, but you are absolutely determined to stay out of debt, mm-hmm. those are the extremes you take. Yes. 
or you go out and you get an extra job Mm -hmm. to cover that. Right. Like those are your choices. Yeah, it is. I think when Haley was four, we got her a scooter. It was $20. That was her only present. Dude, she played with that for years. For years. That (laughs) was a favorite. Bang for your buck. So my point is, I don't even know what I would buy my kids for $500. Even now, even with an 18-year-old. I'm not even sure how to do that without feeling like I'm spoiling them. Because that's a, that's a lot of fun fun stuff going on. Yeah. Unless you're taking those that $500 and you're giving them some kind of investment. Right. You know, CD that's going to pay off, you know, mutual fund that's going to pay off when yeah, they're 18. I'm, I'm way more impressed with the mutual fund option than the CD option. Whatever. The CD is like 1.5%. Yeah. But my point is everything else just turns out to be stuff. That you just declutter in five years anyway, <laughs> as you as you jump on the minimalist trend. Now, if you told me that was when you're, you know, that once a year birthday money is what they're like getting all their new clothes from and they're actually using necessities out of that, that's a little bit different. But I, I don't think that's where we're at. You're right. I don't think that's quite what we're talking about. But you make a great point that if you're doing like a nice, um, let's say you go to church every Sunday, you know, and they're getting a nice dress or school shoes or whatever it is, socks, underwear. Okay. I can see spending a little bit more than that, but even for back to school, I don't spend anywhere near $500 for my kids. No. Like less than half of that. Nope. Doesn't happen. Okay. The next one is travel. Now I love travel. I do too. So I actually thought about keeping it in the budget, just cutting it to a hundred dollars a month instead of 420. That's probably realistic because you probably need to do some other things. Small things, go visit some friends, some family that are close by, drive here and there. Drive a little, maybe do a day trip to like a a lake that's close-ish, run to the beach, do a camping situation. There's all kinds of things that you can do that are much, much less than like doing a Disney trip or doing a cruise or whatever it is. But until you get these kind of debt numbers under control, big trips are out of the question for a while. Yeah, totally. I don't know if it's a year or two, but I think if you tighten up the bootstraps and you were to start throwing a thousand or two a month at these debts, you're, you're paid off in potentially two years, three years. Potentially, potentially. Okay. Last one was Christmas. I, I still think you need to keep Christmas, but I thought they could cut it to a hundred a month. That gives you 1200 for Christmas. 1200 for Christmas is going to be no big fancy dinner party. It's not going to be Christmas announcements with the family pictures. You're probably not going to go to the neighborhood party and bring alcohol. This is a simple one. Okay. So here's my idea on having a tight Christmas or two or three. Okay. Because we've had a few. We have definitely had a few. You come together as a family Mm -hmm. and you make it a family goal. You say, hey guys, this is where we're at. So for this Christmas or that next Christmas, whatever, you guys set these goals of how much you're going to spend. And it's something that you do together. The not spending extra amounts of money or trying to find ways to do Christmas on a budget is something you do together. It Mm -hmm. actually brings you closer together. It's probably more in harmony with the spirit of Christmas. Probably. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's less about commercialization and more about what you guys are doing together. I want to bring up this Christmas that we did when Andrew was one and a half. Andrew wasn't one and a half at Christmas. What am I talking about? He was born in January. He was one. (laughs) He's one. Haley is like three or something. And we were in our debt-free journey Mm -hmm. at this point. So it was a tight Christmas. We had just bought our first house. It was a year. It was over a year before, but yes, yes, it was, it was tight. We were paying off student loans and we had our first house and bills from having babies because we didn't have great health insurance. And so it was tight. I don't even remember what we got Haley because I don't know why I don't remember, but I don't, it wasn't that expensive, but I remember what we got Andrew. We went to Ikea and it was $17 and we bought him that tube tunnel thing. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. We had that stupid tunnel (laughs) for 10 years. Yeah. All the kids played with it. Oh my gosh. We got a lot of use out of that. It was a favorite. It was $17. That was his like one present. I don't even think you and I got each other anything. If we did, it was something small and I don't remember what it was. No, I don't even remember either. That's clearly, that's how memorable the gifts were. (laughs) For those couple of years, I mean, there was probably three or four years there. We were really extra tight on Christmas. I don't remember what we got each other. There's a couple things I do remember. I remember more the goal of going, getting through Christmas on a budget. 
Yes, yes, I do remember that. And it was okay. Was that the CVS Christmas? That was like the next one. That was the next one? Oh my gosh. The following Christmas, this was hilarious. I was really big into couponing. And I had all these extra care bucks at CVS, like hundreds of dollars worth. So I think I gave Dave a hundred dollars in basically paper extra care bucks. And I was like, here, go buy Christmas presents for me with this. At CVS. At CVS. We bought every present at CVS. You got me the electric razor. Like I did. the Philips Norelco it was, electric razor. It was $80. I still have it. And I used extra care bucks to pay for it. I got... Andrew, a toy truck from the toy aisle, and I got Haley plastic food, like a little grocery ba- basket of plastic food for the play kitchen. That was funny. Oh, yeah. You got me perfume. Did I? Yeah, you did. Because I sell perfume at CVS. <laughs> <laughs> now, those are memorable Christmases. Yeah. Those are for sure. Okay. I, I look back on those Christmases with good, fond memories. Yeah, yeah. I don't think about what we didn't have. I, th- I think about it was something we did together. That's why I said that. Well said. Well said. Okay. That's our list of low-hanging fruit. Okay. So that comes out to a $1,650 a month savings-ish, give or take a few dollars. Okay. sixteen fifty. We have now successfully dropped below our income. Okay. So we were about 50 over. Now we're under about 1600 a month. Step two is baby emergency fund probably i'd say month one you have to take that whole 1600 and just set it in a separate account just in case yep your ac blows up your dishwasher catches fire your tire catches fire on your car and flies off the car and rolls down the hill in a flaming circle of death all these things are things that have actually happened Your water heater starts leaking like crazy. I mean, there's just so many things that could happen and it's nice to have that buffer. Okay, and then number three, here's the dilemma. Do you pay off the personal loan to the family member first before anything else? So you can like... What's the the total amount on that? The total amount on the family member is $3,500. Oh, that would be pretty awesome. It would take a couple months, like two and a half months maybe to get rid of that, but then it's not hanging over your head anymore and then you don't feel awkward about it. Yeah. I would say you make your minimum payments on the other things and then you pay off your family member first. Right. And then, like I said, six of these credit cards are $500 or less. I say you start knocking out those, those little ones. There's one, say, there's you, one that's $160. Knock I agree. It out. I agree. I say you follow Dave Ramsey's debt snowball. You want to stack successes on successes here. Did I mention there's 18 credit cards? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I think as soon as you knock some of these out, you cancel them. Mm -hmm. No person needs 18 credit cards. Oh, there's no doubt. You cancel them. You have to cancel them. How many credit cards do you think is a reasonable amount? Two to three. I only use one at a time. Yeah. And now I cycle mine because I do credit card churning, but I use one in a year. And then the next year I do a different one. I cancel the first one. So I only use one. And we never carry a a balance. No, I never, ever carry a balance. We always pay pay the balance when it comes through. So what's great about this is as you knock off these small debts, like the personal loan, that's a minimum payment of 300 a month. That's gone. You can add that to your snowball, right? And then you knock out, what, five, six, seven mini credit cards. All of those get added and so on and so forth. And yeah, you follow the Dave Ramsey snowball method until you're done with those and then you can... Move on over to the car and the home improvement loan. The Dave Ramsey snowball method is so good mentally. Yes. Because you start to feel like you're getting back in control or that you've made success. And when you get success on top of success, he says snowball for a reason because it just starts to gain momentum. It gets bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. And what do you he's call that? A bigger shovel. You have a bigger shovel to yeah. make bigger progress as you move along. And when... Oh my gosh, when you see 18 credit cards and then it's 14 and then it's 10 and then it's seven, that definitely triggers something in your brain Yep, that helps you keep going. What I like about this scenario is their income is fabulous, really fabulous. And once all this debt's paid off, it might take a year or two, they're going to be doing so well. How much did I say goes towards debt? $3,800. Could you imagine not having to pay $3,800 in credit card payments? What would you do with it? Dude, that's a lot of money. 
Dude, I would I would be beefing up the retirement and kids' college stat as soon as that was paid off. For sure. At that point, when you get that under control, you've got to start thinking about future you. Right. Future your kids. Yes. Right? How can I prepare and insulate myself against whatever is going to be thrown our way? Yeah, we have an 18-year-old who is in her last year of high school, and we're having those conversations right now. The great thing is we started saving up for college for her over 10 years ago. Yeah. So now it's not a panic crisis situation. Now we're like, college? Yeah, okay. We can swing that because we thought about it 10 years ago instead of, oh no, it's here. (laughs) What are we going to do? So I think that's really important to jump into. Okay, Dave, you're talking to this family right here, okay, that we helped anonymous family of seven. Give them a piece of advice right now to help them feel good about moving forward with this debt-free plan, with cutting all of these things they're used to having. Boy, well, that, that is not my specialty. Little... <laughs> <laughs> no, no motivational <laughs> words of encouragement at all? No? That... What is your specialty? Oh, I can definitely... Get your po- crap together. I can definitely point out what you're doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I want to tell them things are going to be tight for a while, but it's going to be so much better. You're going to feel so much more empowered and in control and capable when you get this under control. But it's going to be a road. Yeah, it will be a road. I think it will not work if both partners are not on the same page. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's... Okay, here's what I have to say about it. This, to me, is a lot like climbing a mountain. You look at the mountain, and it looks impossible. Intimidating. It's intimidating. You can't see the path. You don't see any footsteps. No one has ever walked this path before. You don't know where you're going. You don't know how you're going to start. You can't even see the finish line, okay? All you can do is take the steps right in front of you and make some make some steps and focus on right now. And then you just keep going and eventually you turn around and look behind you and you can see how far you've come. That's the coolest thing about climbing a mountain is if you focus on just what you're doing right there in the moment and then you look back, you're like, oh my gosh, look at all this, look at all this great stuff I've accomplished. But if you look too far in the future, it can be overwhelming and feel impossible. But eventually you get to the top and then you're like, oh my gosh, I freaking made it. (laughs) It's the process steps, Mm -hmm. right? It's that one step in front of the other, the Mm -hmm. little thing that I can do right in front of me. I can't worry about that scree field Mm -hmm. or not, or Christmas that's coming. All I can worry about is what I can do today. And I'm making steps to get me to that next point. Mm -hmm. So trust in the process. Yeah, exactly. Trust in the steps you're taking right now. And eventually, you'll make it to the top. It's like an IV drip. It is like an IV drip. Do you have any closing thoughts? The only other thing I would say is sometimes when you're that far in debt, getting an extra job, finding extra additional income methods can help get you out of debt faster. They can. They can. Absolutely. I don't know what kind of time they have. Right. Or anything like that. But if you can find a way to earn an extra $500 to $1,000 a month with a side gig here or there, and you throw that, you significantly reduce the amount of time it's going to take to pay this off. I suspect with a previous budget of $500 a birthday, they have a lot of stuff in their house. I suspect that they could probably sell a few things. Potentially. and, And give them a kickstart. Yeah. In the right direction. I think that's good. Well, I'd say this goes to show that it doesn't matter how much you make. It really matters if you can stay within your means. Yes, very true. Because I think they make a fabulous income. Absolutely. So true. Okay. I think we're going to leave it there. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. That was fun. All right. Talk to you next time.